Okay, in this video, I will show you guys how to prove the sum to product identity for psi. And first of all, we'll be looking at the angle sum formula for psi, which it says sine of alpha plus beta is equal to sine alpha times cosine beta plus sine beta times cosine alpha. In the meantime, the difference identity for sine is sine alpha minus beta is equal to sine alpha times cosine beta minus sine beta times cosine alpha. And if you want to see why the first one is true, you can check out the video in the description. And for the second one, you can just simply plug in negative beta into the original beta. And you see, cosine is an even function. Therefore, cosine of negative beta is the same as cosine of positive beta. But sine is an odd function. So sine of negative beta becomes negative sine beta right here. That's why it's a subtraction between. Anyway, from these two equations that we can see, we can add them up. And we see that on the left-hand side, we will have sine of alpha plus beta plus sine of alpha minus beta. And this is equal to, well, this and that cancel each other out nicely, right? And this and that are the same. So we have two of them. So that's equal to two times sine alpha times cosine beta. And we'll be focusing on this equation right here. First of all, let me show you guys how we can come up with the sum to product identity. Because we can see that on the left hand side, we have sine and sine and we're adding them up. But the inputs are different, right? So this is why we call the sum. And then on the right hand side, we have a product of sine and cosine. So you'll see this is the sum to product identity. Anyway, let's look at this right here first. Let me rewrite this down again. When we have sine of alpha plus beta plus sine of alpha minus beta. Okay, this is an angle. This is another angle. What we're going to do is we are going to let this right here to be another variable. I will just call that to be capital A. Likewise, I will call this to be another variable. I will call that to be capital B. So alpha minus beta is equal to capital B. And as you can see, we are pretty much talking about sine A plus sine B, right? Well, on the right-hand side, we have the alpha and beta inside of the sine and cosine. So our goal is I need to solve for alpha and beta from this right here. Hopefully, the alpha and beta will be in terms of A and B so that we will actually come up with an identity. Okay, that's actually not bad to do at all because if you look at this, we can just add them up so that this and that will cancel right away. And we see 2 alpha is equal to A plus B. And of course, we can divide both sides by 2. So we get alpha is equal to A plus B all over 2, right? Okay, well, to get beta, it's pretty much the same thing. Let me rewrite the first one again. Alpha plus beta is equal to A. And then alpha minus beta is equal to B, right? But I will multiply everything on the second equation by negative. So I will have negative beta. And then negative times negative becomes positive. We have the plus beta and it's equal to negative times B. So that's negative B like this. I just multiply the second equation by negative like that. So I can just add them up again, and we see this time the alpha cancel each other out. And beta plus beta, that's 2 beta, and then this is equal to A minus B. Divide both sides by 2, we get beta is equal to A minus B all over 2, like that, right? Cool. So what we're saying is that if this is A, that's B, I can just plug in alpha and beta on the right-hand side, and we can come with a formula. So let me write this down for you guys to be legitimate. We have sine. This right here, I call out to be A. So we have sine A like this. And then we add it with sine. This right here, we call it to be B, right? So we have sine B like that. And this is equal to, on the right-hand side, we have 2 times sine of alpha, which we know is A plus B all over 2. And then we multiply this by cosine of beta, which is that, cosine of A minus B over 2, like this. And as you can see, 